everyone. Uh, good, uh, maybe good morning as well and good day. So welcome to the uh, seventh uh, inaugural lecture where we introduce Professor Shan Tiger again. So uh, it's with uh, great pleasure that I invite Professor Shan Tiger again for the the inaugural lecture. Over to you, Professor Shan Tiger. Thank you and uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, dear Vice Chancellor, Deputy Vice Chancellor, the Dean of Faculty of Engineering here with me today, uh, the dear um, Dean Faculty of uh, Graduate Studies, Senior Professors, Professors, let's, uh, my dear, my dear colleagues and students, as well as the all distinguished invitees. My journey with polymers, it's a uh, interesting story behind that. Uh, and today I would like to share highlights of my journey of polymers. And I want to talk uh, uh, a topic that is really interested in polymer industry. And that is on blending of rubbers and thermoplastics. I also want to talk about some outcomes of the successful research that are applicable for the polymer industry and my contribution towards development and development of polymer education and polymer industry in Sri Lanka. First, uh, I like to say what are polymers. Uh, polymers are, are can be either natural or synthetic and these are made out of long molecules called macromolecules. And it's a combination of uh, multiples of monomers. I started my journey during my studies, undergraduate studies, uh, when I was in university uh, in 1992. Because I'm a chemical engineer, and under the under our curriculum, there are two modules to be followed: uh, polymer science and technology in second year and polymer engineering in final year. In addition to that, I have a chance of undergoing implant training at Rubber Tire Corporation in Sri Lanka. Here, I want to mention two of my mentors, especially. Uh, those are Professor Mrs. Leela Sivagurunathan and Professor Kadapu Subramaniam, from whom I learned uh, basics of polymers. After graduating, I thought of uh, joining to the department as an academic, and I had a chance to join the division of polymer technology of, attached to the Department of Chemical Engineering in 1993. That is the start of my academic career. And I started uh, academic career by lecturing and demonstrating to undergraduates and specifically to NDT students. Then to gain more knowledge on polymers, I started to follow a master's degree in polymer technology in part-time basis. And I conducted research on polymers for the first time on the topic of preparation and characterization of scented encapsulated powdered natural rubber. The outcomes of this research was a natural rubber in a free flowing powder form and that is produced starting from the liquid latex form. And that will be a competitive raw material for continuous processing as well as it is a energy efficient system because normally in rubber industry, uh, polymer mixing is done with heavy machinery and solid rubbers are used. But if it is in the powder form, we can consider this as an energy reduction in processing and a good option for it. But uh, there are a big challenge for that, that is the large scale production of powdered natural rubber that 
are required for the proper industry. Then I started a master's degree in master of uh, philosophy degree and that is again on a rubber based research. Uh, that the topic was the ultrasonic devulcanization of sulfur vulcanized natural rubber. Under this uh, project research, uh, high energy ultrasound is used to break the selectively break the bonds, specifically carbon sulfur and sulfur sulfur bonds in the sulfidic linkages without disturbing the carbon carbon bonds in the main macromolecule. And the outcome was a pre-processable rubber mass and during sonication, the sulfur that is utilized in the crosslinks is released to the rubber mass and that sulfur was enough to pre-volcanize the same rubber mass without adding additional volcanizing material. Then, uh, after a certain period of time, uh, with the encouragement of the uh, academic staff, specifically at the University of Morador, and mainly the main encouraged person that I have to mention is Professor Ajit Dialis. He actually forced me to do a PhD, and I started the PhD on development of rubber thermoplastic blades from from ground tire rubber and waste polymers and to make a usable product combining the properties of the two polymers into one. Then research was successful and a variety of useful materials were obtained by the plastic waste and with the rubber waste and those are used for a wide range of applications and that is specifically based on their blend composition. With these images, you can see the two waste are combined and a resultant material uh, is a processable material in thermoplastic equipment and combining the properties of flexibility of rubbers and the stiffness of plastics, a rubber toughened plastic was developed. And by varying the composition, the properties were varied from brittle to ductile, and the phase morphology also varied from plastic continuous phase to the rubber continuous phase. And we'll see why the natural rubber is important to Sri Lanka and why I focus my research on natural rubber. Sri Lanka is a rubber producing country and is the 13th largest rubber producer in the world. Though Sri Lanka is produced natural rubber, the synthetic rubbers and a small amount of natural rubber is imported to fulfill the requirement by the industry. Rubber exports and rubber based product exports are uh, there because there are so many rubber industries involved in the exporting and the 8.4 percent is shared by the rubber exports of the total compared to the total exports the import revenue uh, sorry export revenue is reached 1.09 billion in 20 us dollars in 2021 uh, but the rubber is exposed in as raw form as well as value added products. But still 19% of the raw rubber is export and the revenue is only 3.8% from the total rubber exports. Then there is a gap for value addition to the raw rubber and therefore my research areas were focused on natural rubber. If you consider the natural rubber, uh, natural rubber, the field latex or the rubber latex is kept from the rubber tree called heavier resiliencies. And there are two types 
forms of rubber is commercially used one in liquid phase as concentrated ladles and the other is in dry rubber form either available in sheets or blocks concentrated ladles is used to produce thin ball and soft rubber components whereas dry rubber is used to prepare composite specifically and these are thick hard and having different components you all know that rubber in which form rubber cannot be processed alone there is a variety of ingredients are required to approach to reach the uh, specific requirements for specific applications the researchers in the whole world they try to find or synthesize new materials because the developed countries uh, based on their environmental health and safety factors they impose restrictions for their imports then the regulations are getting stringent and restrictions are limited limitations are imposed by day by day for the conventional chemical ingredients as an option and to be globally competitive the rubber industries have to find alternative materials that are comply with the new regulations then uh, my uh, research was focused again for the introducing new compounds for rubber industry uh, and that can be the can be a modification for a existing industry that are considered as safe and comply with the regulation as well as that can be the nano materials can be incorporated or there can be plastic source can be incorporated to meet these requirements there are limitations as well as the expected properties are becoming enhanced the conventional materials are considered as not safe because certain chemicals are released bad substances that means uh, for re release leachates as well as there are some bad emissions in addition to the development of the technically advanced materials and the ingredients i my focus was is again on how to re recycle and reuse and recover the rubber waste for that photosynthesizers and some biodegradable materials were incorporated to the rubber network because rubber network cannot be broken easily without any treatment then this the waste is becoming a breeding grounds for insects as well as a huge burden to the environment then sonication or use of ultrasound energy is an good option and that should be popularized among the rubber recyclers because there is no chemicals attached uh, in that process then i will we'll talk on the most interested research area that is blending of rubbers and thermocasters that will be a timely important topic because in sri lanka plastic industry is separately operated as well as in rubber industry that means rubber products are not manufactured in plastic industry if you consider the differences between rubbers and the plastics the rubbers ha are having high molecular weight and high viscosity it has a high it has an amorphous structure and have specific feature called elasticity because of that rubber shows high flexibility and
and that can withstand high pressures. In the other hand, plastics or thermoplastics are tailor made and we can produce according to the melt viscosities that we want and according to the molecular weights that we weights that we required. And the morphology varies from crystalline to amorphous. Because of crystallinity, it shows high strength but shows low flexibility. Because the rubber uh, thermoplastic is stiff, rigid and brittle, if we blend these two materials, we can produce, as I mentioned earlier, rubber toughened plastic. Rubber thermoplastic blend is macroscopically homogeneous, but micro microscopically it is heterogeneous. That means the rubber phase and the plastic phase are different. If we compare, consider the preparation methods of rubbers, blends or the composites, because I have to talk about composites as well. If you consider a tire, tire is a composite. That composition of different materials into one. And blend is a material of two here, the, either rubber or the thermoplastic. And we can prepare these blends through melt blending. In that case, the temperature or processing temperature should be above the melting point of the thermoplastic. The continuous processes like we can use and for that we have to use twin screw compounding extruders. Otherwise, if you consider the batch processes, we can use plasticizers. In both equipment, the materials will flow, melt, mix with the other ingredients and the reactions are takes place and finally the structure is structure of the morphology of the blend takes place. If you have the rubber and the plastic, if we mix more rubber with less plastic, we can have a simple blend in that plastic is in the dispersed phase but rubber is in the continuous phase because we have added more rubber into the blend. But if you add more plastics, the continuous phase will be the thermoplastic. There is another type in addition to the simple blend that is called reactive blend or the thermoplastic vulcanization. That process is called dynamic vulcanization. In that process, in addition to the rubber and the thermoplastic, there is another Material called crosslinker is added to crosslink the rubber phase. By crosslinking the rubber, it, the viscosity becomes high and it goes to the dispersed phase, although the rubber composition is much greater than the composition of the thermoplastic. If the thermoplastic vulcanizates are produced, always the continuous phase is a thermoplastic then we can process using thermoplastic equipment. Talking into the opportunities of the blends or why the blends are becoming popular in the world. By combining of the commercial available polymers, there is a potential to prepare or develop a technically advanced materials and can easily obtain the combined properties of the two polymers and it will give a synergistic effect. And it is more economical than synthesizing of a single new polymer to meet the specifications of the material that is required. By varying the blend composition, a variety of materials can be produced based on their blend compositions. 
This image shows the stress strain curves of the materials developed using natural rubber and the low density polyethylene. Low density polyethylene has high strength but less flexibility, and rubber has high flexibility with low strength. In that case, combining those two materials, different materials can be produced and can be applied for to produce high performance products or as products with less performance depending on the requirement. Normally, in a simple blend, the phase conversion is takes place at 65 to 70% of natural rubber. Then the other advantages of having blends is the use ability to use of thermoplastic processing equipment. If the rubber phase is the dispersed phase and plastic become in the continuous phase, the plastic equipment can be used. Normally, the rubbers cannot be processed by blow molding. If you incorporate the rubber into thermoplastics, the rubbers now also can be processed for blow molding articles. Since the thermoplastic phase is the continuous, it is recyclable. But rubber cannot be recyclable. Then, uh, with the addition of plastics to the rubber, we can enhance the stiffness and strength properties and we have to use less amount of compounding ingredients in rubber in uh, producing uh, products with the blades. In general, rubber industry, there are so many fillers are added to increase the stiffness and to give the reinforced from the rubber compounds and these compounding ingredients in large quantities that can be released to the environment with time, with use uh, during the period of usage as well as when it's becoming a waste. Then that will be an environmental problem if you use high quantities of chemical ingredients. But preparing blends and reducing the use of uh, compounding ingredients that will be and a benefit highly benefited by the rubber industry and to meet the new regulations. In the meantime, use of rubber, natural rubber, in a technical use of natural rubber as a technically important material, uh, uh, with incorporating plastic is again benefited and that is a value addition to the pro natural rubber in our country. The applications of the rubber thermoplastic blades can be varied. There can be soft weight blades, that means the continuous phase is rubber, the plastic is embedded as a dispersed phase, and we can use for food in the footwear industry as well as to produce different types of extruded, blow molded, and injection molded products. High grade blends means in that blends the continuous phase is thermoplast. Here we can add, produce different types of automobile components and roofing tiles, port surfaces, as well as mortar sound barriers. And there are so many applications of hard grade blades. Not only combining the virgin materials, we can produce materials or blends or the composites with wastes. That is an, another advantage, advantage of using rubber thermoplastic blades in rubber industry. Then what are the challenges? Rubber is amorphous and thermoplastic is partially crystalline. Then the incompatibility is the main problem 
main challenge that should be overcome. For that, we have to think on how the mixing is done because the key factor for compatibility is the melt viscosity during blending. The, both rubber and thermoplastics are inert, like that means it does not have some reactive groups to, to be generate or develop an interface between two incompatible materials. Another challenge is to obtain or achieve the required balance properties for a specific application. If we add rubbers and thermoplastics together, and initially it gives a coarse phase morphology. By optimizing the blend conditions or processing conditions, and by equalizing the blend melt viscosities, the rubbers and plastics can be blend to get a morphology with a fine manner. Here you can see from this picture how we can get the, how we can convert the coarse morphology to a fine morphology. If the particles are fine, embedded particles are in finer manner, it increases the surface area and have a better addition between the two phases. The next challenge is the find solid rubber as particles. Normally the solid rubber is available and commercially used either as sheets or as blocks. These blocks and sheets cannot be fed into the plastic extruders but then we have to have solid rubber in particles in powder form or as particles to feed into the extruders. And that industry is not yet established in Sri Lanka. The morphology is the key factor to enhance, to obtain enhanced properties. In an incompatible blend, the SEM images shows a gap between the two phases. During stretching, the two phases are separated and the whites are created and we can see easily a phase separation. But if a partially compatible blade, the two phases are overlapped and there is no separation. To enhance the properties of a blade, we have to incorporate different types of additives that will enhance the additions between phases or to enhance the cohesion between within the each phase. The incorporations can be either a compatibilizer or a coupling agent, a functional filler or a novel curing agent that is not commonly used in the rubber industry. Since the blend is a heterogeneous in microscopically, the tan delta curve in the th th uh, thermal characteristics that shows two peaks for two glass transitions of the two materials. But if we use a compatibilizer or to have an addition of cohesion inside the blend, the two glass transition temperatures becoming closer and show somewhat homogeneous nature. If it becoming a single peak, that means it is perfectly homogeneous. And that cannot be expected from polymer blends at all. Here, I included again a stress print. Reactive blend with a compatibilizer or the compatibilizer is activated and in the ground tire rubber, it's a rubber based and the base polypropylene blend. And to devolcanize the rubber, a de delinker is added. 
then you can see how the properties are improved with the addition of compatibilizers and the other secondary materials. In addition to the external materials incorporated, the two polymers can be modified to enhance adhesion or the fine morphology of the blends can be obtained through process optimization by variation of the time of blending, the temperature of blending and the mixing speed. This is another result of one of my research, one of our research studies. Uh, if we had a small amount of curing agent, we can see post morphology, but change in the loading of the curing agent, we can have the fine morphology to improve uh, the properties that we require. Other thing, we can enhance the addition or the collisions by enhancing, uh, by changing the mixing order. Here you can see a control that means without adding any coupling agent but we add the coupling agent we can enhance the or we can reinforce the polymer uh, polymer blade and the mixing order will give different properties suitable for different applications i have contributed for different studies on developing rubber thermoplastic blades LDP is incorporated natural rubber with a coupling agent and LLDP, another grade of polyethylene is incorporated to natural rubber with, with a coupling agent and HDP is incorporated to natural rubber using a functional filler. Similarly, the waste materials are combined together for industrial applications in that studies, uh, high density polyethylene waste and the ground tire rubber is added with fly ash as a filler, as well as waste polypropylene and ground tire rubber is blended with a compatibilizer. The research outcomes and how I disseminate the knowledge that I gain doing research on rubber thermoplastic blades. Uh, through, I published several papers as well as presented in conferences. You can see there are so many co-workers work with me and always I thankful for all of them. Uh, here you can see some applications we produced a two-layer mud guard and is commercialized. As well as prepared a floor tile combining rubber and thermoplastics. And it is again successful. This is another successful application, uh, but that is yet to be commercialized. The commercialization was a bit delayed due to the financial situation in the country because the investment is uh, the company's company involved is thinking about the investment uh, at this stage the simple blends are produced and then with that simple blades we produce pellets and then out of those pellets uh, sheets corrugated sheets were prepared as well as uh, the high density polyethylene and natural rubber blends were used to produce prototype proofing sheets. And this project is funded by NRC. Uh, in addition to the combining of virgin materials, the waste materials are also incorporated and produced a low cost proof in sheet and in that case uh, waste high density polyethylene ground tire rubber and fly ash that is from uh, Sri Lanka raw material uh, and we give the value added to all these materials 
and produced a commercially viable proofing sheet. This proofing sheet that is produced is competitive and it's competitive over the traditional roofing materials because since the rubber plastic is uh, less dense and less weight, lightweight than asbestos and clay types. Due to the lightness, a simple support framework is required and it is free of health hazards compared to asbestos. Actually, this project was started in 2014 when the asbestos was going to ban. Then uh, this material is not transparent as polyethylene and PVC roofing sheets and it's advantage to use in for household rubber into the plastic, it becomes a tough material and it withstand for impact loads. And it's a good advantage for using as a roofing material. The brittle plastic is converted to a tough plastic using uh, incorporating rubbers. And it's non-corrosive compared to, compared to uh, metal roofing. And the main important factor is it is homogeneous having a homogeneous cross-section. Nowadays, there are plastic roofing sheets with three or four layers. These are layered structure PVC roofing and it's popular. But this plastic, this roofing material gives an homogeneous cross-section and if it is at one point is damaged, that will not effect for the properties of the roofing material. Since the continuous phase of the material is plastic that can be easily recyclable after use. In addition to the blending, uh, development of rubber thermoplastic blades, we, uh, with the co-workers, we did some uh, researches that are important to the rubber industry in Sri Lanka. One important research was incorporating nano clay to rubber to make a rubber master batch. As I mentioned, uh, in rubber industry, uh, either sheet rubber or block rubber is used. The powdered rubber is not popular at all and not producing in this country. And in to get the reinforced melt of the rubbers and to enhance the other properties, different types of ingredients are added that can be not safe if we consider the environment and the safe, uh, health. With the small quantity of nanomaterials, the same properties can be obtained and they are similar to the rubber vulcanizing that are prepared with the highly loaded conventional fillers. In rubber industries, the large quantities of powdered fillers are added in the factory itself. But if nano composite or the nano filler incorporated rubber material or rubber mass can be used as a raw material in rubber industry, the rubber in the flow will be a nice place, will be a nice place that if you visit a rubber industry, you can see there is no much clean environment on the factory floor. Here, uh, the challenge is to get a stable nanoclay dispersion because we have to have the clay dispersed in water first to make the aqueous dispersion. In this study, uh, clay dispersion is incorporated into the natural rubber latex and then the master batch is produced. 
normally uh, either sheets are, or block bubbles are produced starting from the concentrated latex, but they are the acids are added to coagulate the rubber mass to make a dry rubber or the solid rubber. If nano fillers are added in rubber industry using the conventional rubber processing equipment, the conventional nano composites are produced. They are the nano platelets, they, those will be not separated to give enhanced properties. There can be intercalated or the exfoliated structures produced, but main challenge is to obtain the exfoliated structure in the master batch and to retain this exfoliation when compounding with the other ingredients using high energy intensive rubber processing equipment. And another challenge is to obtain the greater mechanical properties at low nanoclade loadings. The outcomes of my research, uh, we uh, found a new method to produce nanoclay composites starting from the natural rubber latex. Then that was successful and the rubber initially dis make a dis in the take into the dispersion form and this egg was disper dispersion is incorporated into liquid latex and then the Clay exfoliated structures are formed, and then it the liquid nano composite is dried or coagulated in situ. The clay is dried as well as the rubber becoming into a dry form. The new method did not uh, incorporate any acids to coagulate and instead use different types of uh, coagents and mod modifiers to prepare organically modified clay. And it was success and a nano clay master batch, incorporated master batch was prepared at 2 PHR, that means 2% of nano clay in rubber nano composite. This rubber is contain only a less amount of nano clay, but it, it can be shown good tensile and tear and the high hardness and high modulus as well as very good properties. If we want this rubber master batch to produce a low performance uh, applications, the conventional fillers can be loaded and the product uh, cost of the product can be produced. If this master batch is used and in the industry there are many opportunities and the different types of chemicals that are used can be cut down and reduce and make the materials more environmental friendly. But very high results can be obtained by incorporating small amount of nanomaterials. Then the leachates also can be reduced. Another successful research that is applicable for the rubber industry was incorporating of biomaterials to rubber composites. There are so many biomaterials were incorporated to latex as well as to dry rubber because my research were broadened. Uh, it's in broad areas and covered both latex industry as well as the rubber industry. Then corn derivatives were used, banana fiber, coconut shell powder, as well as tea waste, uh, biochar as in replacing carbon black as well as wood derivatives are used as antioxidants in solid tile industry. In addition to 
these biomaterials and to enhance the rate of degradability, the prodegradants were also used uh, to speed up the disintegration or to promote the oxidation of the rubber. Because rubber is having a chemical network, three-dimensional chemical network, and without any special treatments, the rubber will not degrade uh, under normal atmosphere and it takes about more than eight years sometimes. Then to speed up the in disintegration, then uh, metal oxides, transition metal oxides were incorporated and at a limited time period, the rubber rubbers were able to de degrade. The challenge, there are so many challenges using biomaterials. One thing is compatibility of hydrophobic rubber matrix and hydrophilic cellular fibers or the powders. And the other thing, most of the biomaterials show very poor strength. Then the incorporation of the biofiller loadings are limited and now uh, the result because if we increase the loading of the fillers, the quality of the product will go down. The another challenge to identify the bacterial species that consume rubber and those bacteria species should be available in most of the any type of soil because we can't local uh, develop the bacteria in a localized place and uh, to dump those waste rubber in that particular one. Another challenge is the prolonging of the lifetime of the product while enhancing its biodegradability. That means the rubber product should be used maybe for two years if you consider the rubber slipper and after that, that should be degraded within a short period of time. Then antioxidants are adding to prolong the lifetime of a product and pro-oxidants are adding to enhance the biodegradability after it's used. Unfortunately, there are no international or national standards to measure the biodegradability of rubbers. We also have to use uh, standards that are established for Uh, and this test is done for composting conditions and for aerobic digestion. Only 40% degradability is obtained within 180, 180 days. But to validate the biodegradability of a product, the 90% of the hydrocarbon to be degraded within 180 days. But, is, but that limit is for the plastics and not for the rubbers. The rubbers cannot be easily biodegradable because the sulfur and other substances present in the plastic, these are giving harmful effect for the bacterial species that are populated. We were able to produce uh, disposable gloves by incorporating 20% corn grain starch and then uh, this in this case this test is conducted to find the biodegradability in soil burial uh, in aerobic conditions and only 50% of the biodegradability is obtained within 15 weeks. But if you in, uh, incorporate, increase the corn grain loading, we can achieve 80%, even 80% of bioreactivity within 15 weeks. However, it gives poor uh, properties and we cannot use for processing of latex products.
there are so many uh, projects that are conducted with Samson compounds, uh, private limited, and with the uh, Samson International PLC company. Uh, and these projects are belongs to the rubber process and product development incubated at the Department of Chemical and Process Engineering. I was uh, a director in the incubator as a member of the board of management. And I served from the beginning of the incubator to the incubator as a research advisor. And by now, more than 40 projects were uh, done. And some of the projects were commercialized. And my journey with polymers will never end. That will continue for the development of polymer education and polymer industry in Sri Lanka. I closely worked with Plastic and Rubber Institute of Sri Lanka. And since 2006, and I'm a member of the Education Advisory Committee. And uh, the Department of Polymer Science at the University of Sri Jayamadhanapura, now they are expanding uh, their uh, department. And there are four courses currently conducted. And I was the uh, founding member like for the Polymer Science Department. During my sabbatical, I was attached to the Department of Chemistry and uh, developed this department. And now it is progressing well. Uh, still, I work as a research advisor to the Samson Compounds and uh, Samson International Companies in the DSI group, as well as I co closely work with Rubber Research Institute of Sri Lanka, Industrial Development Board, uh, the rubber sector of the Industrial Development Board, and Ministry of Industries, Export Development Board, and with a SLAP. That is to develop policies and to have have some projects. Uh, considering the environmental pollution gen uh, with the generated rubber waste in large quantities, as well as the plastic waste, I serve as a consultant scientific for the Public Interest Law Foundation, as well as working with Environmental Committee of SLAS. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Uh, I suppose you have, uh, you, whether you can give rise to, you had 19% uh, uh, of raw rubber still going and 43 million in this day and age. Yeah. Uh, if you can shift that to the one point, add to the 1.09 billion, and then also with nano and in, in the 1.09 can be further pushed down to the 2 billion. That should be maybe the way uh, you can give life to the life to the, the in future. Uh, 